Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets, great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we'll see how we can use Revit schedules like this one here, not just only to show data from the model, but also to edit Revit properties for multiple elements at a time. After this lesson, you'll be able to create a schedule like this, where you have one single line for multiple elements. For example, this line here is represents 14 different walls of the same wall type there, interior partition. That wouldn't allow us to say, modify the comments parameter of all those walls at the same time. If I put in here something like interior and press enter twice, when I select this, the first thing you notice is they are highlighted at the same time in the Revit view. I can then select them like this and isolate elements. And now, whenever I go and select any of those walls, they will have the same comment field that says interior. This one there, this one as well, and so on. So let's create everything from scratch now so we can see the entire process. I will first close this file and open this sample project. Feel free to use your own project if you like. For me, I'm going to use this one because it has everything I need for now to demonstrate this functionality. Alright, now the first step is to create our schedule view. Let's go to view, schedules, schedule and quantities. You can go for any category you like, but for today, let's go for walls. I'm going to select walls there. And then ensure you select the face of the walls you want to show in this schedule. I can know now, that's working drawings. Click OK to proceed. And now just feel free to select a few element parameters that you like to see and modify. For now, I will go for firstly family and type name. And then just like before, we can go for comments. This one there. And also to see how many items are there on a single line later on, we can add in here as well the count parameter. That's good enough for now. I can go OK to proceed. And now just to see clearer the interaction between the schedule and the Revit model, I will open the 3D view as well, tie them side by side, and then isolate this wall category. Okay, now we're good to go. The first thing to do when you want to group elements in a schedule is to choose which parameter you will want to group them by. In our case now, I can use family and type name. To do so, I can now go to Edit Fields, switch to the Grouping tab, and then choose Sort by Family and Type. Click OK to finish. You can see straight away they are sorted by that common parameter. So all the walls that have the same family and type name, they are now put close together like those there. If I want to collapse them so that each line will show all the walls of the same type. I can go to Edit Fields again, click on Sorting and Grouping, and at this time untick this Itemize Every Instance box. Click OK to finish. And straight away, I can see on this line there, I have 9 walls of the curtain wall type. On this one, I have 10 walls of the concrete type and so on. This also means that if I want to change this comments field for all of them at the same time, I can go to this line here and do it for 14 items in one go. Let's try that out. If I can say these are interior again, just like before. You can see the same thing has happened. If I now isolate them in view, all of them should have this comments view equals interior. Another nice feature this approach can give you is this. If I want to say delete all those walls at one time, I can do it quickly from the schedule as well. Let's reset the view just for a minute. Isolate the wall category again. And now let's say I want to delete all those 10 concrete walls on this single line. I can now click them like this to select them all from the schedule view. And then click on the delete button there on the ribbon to remove them all at the same time. It's going to ask if I'm really sure that I want to delete 10 instances of the same type. Yes, please. And now they are gone. Now, that seems easy enough to do. 
But in reality, I know, most of your scare tools will be much bigger than this one there. So just to replicate what you will see in a real project, I will try to add in here a few more parameters for the walls. Let's first go for level or base constraints in this case. Move it to the top. And we can also do fire rating as well. Now before I do OK, let's see what we are having there. We have about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 9 lines corresponding to 9 wall types. If I now click on finish or OK, you can see most of those types now, they have levels associated to them, but not all of them. For example, this interior partition wall type, it has a blank value under the base constraints column. And the reason is, those walls, they don't reside on the same level. If I zoom into them closely now, most of them are on the first level, level 2. But at least one of them, this one there, I can see is on level 1. This is one of the things that will happen when you utilize this not atomize every instance approach in your schedule views. At some point, your data sales will be empty. And that's because you have variables that are different in the same cells. In here, you have for those walls, both level 1 and level 2. That's why Revit chose to not show anything there, to avoid the conflict. If I, just for testing purposes, remove this wall down here, you will see level 2 now appears, because all those walls now, they are residing on the same level. It's not the end of the world when you see those blank cells like this, especially when you don't need to modify them. But make sure you understand still why they are empty and how you can put them back to show a single value. Now, before we wrap up, I will show you now two most common issues that you will encounter when you try to do this on a real project. The first one is to do with read-only parameter. If I now go back to the schedule fields editor, and this time add in an extra parameter called unconnected height. And I've just put it right after base constraints. Click OK now. You will see they have values. But even for those cells that have values there, like this one here with 3300, when I click on it, no matter how hard or how quickly I click, I cannot edit its value. And that's because this value here is not directly editable. It's derived from the wall's top and base constraints, and it's there more like a reporting parameter, not something you can directly edit. Again, not the end of the world, but usually when you see this, make sure you know how to go and check if it's actually a read-only parameter. For example, if I didn't know this was read-only, I could go to here, select any wall in the model, and under its properties, I can see this unconnected height parameter is there, and it's grayed out. That means it's not editable. And now everything starts to make sense again. A similar issue, but with a different course, is this. Let's say I want to link in here another Revit model. I can go to Insert, Link Revit, and just pick in here a random file with some walls inside, like this one here, Strength 1. Not to worry about positioning, anything here we do for now. Let's click on Open to link it in. Now it's in the model, I don't really see it, but I know it's there. If for some reason you have configured your wall schedule to be like this, to include elements in links, you have extra lines in here for walls from that single Revit link. Let's see them now. They get kind of mixed up with the walls in this model at the moment, so let me add in an extra parameter under the RBT links group, and it's the one here called file name. Let's place it at the beginning of our list there. And now we can see central one is the link name and these walls, they come from that Revit link. If I now try to edit any properties of those walls, for example, their comments, I cannot. No matter how many times I click on those cells, they remain static and not editable. So it's similar to this problem up here. When you have a read-only parameter, also watch out for parameters that belong to elements from Revit links. You cannot edit them either. And now for the final tips, maybe make use of type parameters more. If you know those objects will later on share a same value for that single parameter. That's what we have for this file rating parameter here. If I go back to sorting and grouping, and then itemize every instance again, 
I can see that even though now I have one single element per line, if I change this file rating parameter for just one of them, maybe put in here 25, it will change that parameter for all of the walls of that same single type. Because this one is the type parameter, that makes it much easier to ensure those elements share the same parameter value for this property without resorting to our little trick today. So there you have it, two ways to do the same thing, either using type parameter from the beginning or disabling the itemization of every instance in your Revit schedule. The choice is yours. If you like videos like this every single day coming to you, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, make sure to practice this new trick and I'll see you all in the next video.